So, yeah, there you go. I hope everybody is well. So what I'll do is I'll jump into the subject at hand right away. So for people watching the replay, they can get to it. And then we'll do a little Q&A afterwards. And uh, let's just jump into it. All right. So here we go. Based on this article here, uh, why low-code development will not be the end of developers of code. Now, I agree. If you watched any of my previous videos, you know, but this is my opinion as well. So uh, I'm just going to go over this piece, a short one, and then I'll give you my comments. No professional is an expert because of the tools they use. They are an expert due to experience, knowledge, and skill. So you have to remember that programming languages are tools. Frameworks like Node or, uh, see, not Node, Express or React or Vue or Laravel, these are all tools. Um, and no code platforms are also tools. Uh, so let me just jump into it here. Giving non developers a tool to create software does not make them software developers in the same way. In the same way, giving me a wrench does not make me a car mechanic. Experienced software developers have an in depth knowledge of development that non professionals won't have ever heard of. So, yeah, something that I emphasize quite a bit in, um, my discussions is that being an experienced developer starts with understanding software programming language. It starts with understanding uh, what MVC is and so on. It goes way beyond that. And in fact, when you're actively writing uh, software, although you're spending a, you know, a big part of your time writing code, of course, a big part of the job uh, and the complexity of the job is not so much in the code writing, but figuring out how to put all the different pieces together. Modern day development, uh, even prior to these no code platforms, is about stitching together libraries and frameworks and working within that context. So uh, let me jump back in. Okay, low code software development has an incredible potential, fast delivery of software by non developers. Companies suddenly imagine they could reduce their IT expenditure and the cost of creating new software. The dream scenario is, a, is to train up employees on the basics of low-code development and start creating software. The possibility of lowering cost of software development has been have seen has seen hyper growth in the low-code tools. Gartner predicts by 2023, over 50% of medium or too large businesses will have adopted a low-code application as one of their strategic application platforms. Forrester states that low code application development is growing by 50% a year, which is huge. Dynamics 365 partners are experiencing massive growth and creating their own power platform teams. Uh, so why low code software development is eating the world? That's another article. Uh, so how is this going to work? I predict it is going through three I predict it's going to go through three stages below. So we'll take a look. Current stage. We are currently in stage one. Local software development is exploding, and every company is giving it a go for small projects. With a few developers, everything is working well. We, yeah, you, you will hear lots of success, success stories about how application, how an application was built and deployed in days and solves a small business problem. Low code software increases in popularity and be used to create lots of small solutions. Citizen developers will learn to write low code applications. Low code software is perfect for small, simple, isolated functionality. In the short term, it will work great and generate successful examples of solutions deployed into production quickly. Stage number two, cracks will appear. Creating software is the simple part. Maintaining software is more costly. Companies realize that whether you create software with code or no code, it still has to be supported, maintained, and upgraded on a regular basis. The same way a, excuse me, in the same way business realized that having lots of business critical Excel spreadsheets and access database wasn't easy to support. 
having lots of low code applications isn't easy to isn't easy to support. New questions appear. What is going to support all the low code applications? Who is going to support all these low code applications? It is it citizen developers or IT teams? Does anyone stop to ask if low code applications are easy to maintain, deploy, test? What you mean you what you mean you didn't rapidly create a documentation? How is anyone meant to understand these six months later? So he's bringing up good points about software development. Don't worry, I'm going to give you my general commentaries about this pretty quick. Uh, low code software creates maintenance nightmare, nightmare, question mark. So he's asking that question. When companies see the, when companies see the downside of supporting hundreds of small applications, citizen developers will make mistakes because they are inexperienced junior developers with few standards or best practices put in place to ensure quality. Low code applications individually won't be a problem but hundreds of low-code applications written by non-developers will create complex whole solutions. Kind of reminds me of the um, early PHP days. I remember PHP was um, kind of like that in the sense where they, the creators of PHP eliminated a lot of things that you had to do in other environments and other languages. So it made it really easy for people to deploy simple apps and then they started building these things up. And then that's where PHP got its bad reputation, where you had tons of really poorly written code in all kinds of weird, wacky ways in the PHP world, which created a maintenance nightmare, security nightmare. And that's where PHP, old PHP, PHP 3, 4, how it earned its bad reputation because of this same dynamic, taking non-developers, people are not trained, just HTML people, throwing them into building business logic, and boy, did uh, it create some uh, fun times for everybody. Anyway, we'll go on. Uh, there will be failed projects when local developers try to tackle more complex projects, which will take longer than expected, or you can't meet the complex requirements without code. Professional stage. Companies will, re this is the final stage, I believe, that he cites. Companies will realize they need professional developers to set up standards, best practice, automated deployment, and developers' experience in creating software development teams, even for low code. These will be called centers of excellence, or whatever he wants to call them. Another thing is that um, a big part of being a developer is planning out these things, figuring out how to put together the disparate libraries together in a way that makes sense, how to organize user interfaces so that they flow well. That takes a lot of skill. UI experts, UX experts, are it's a, it's, it's a non-trivial task. Uh, it is really in, indeed. So anyhow, let me just finish up this piece. Uh, companies will need, will realize they need professional developers. Microsoft and other low code vendors will now have moved 50% of companies onto low code platform and can raise prices because who wants to move hundreds of small app, critical business application, applications to a cheaper low code provider? Companies will find it difficult to support hundreds of small applications, and because of the poor quality of development, supporting the applications will be difficult. IT departments will struggle to understand how many small applications work together to create a complex whole. That kind of reminds me of um, uh, the microservices model. I remember a few years ago, microservices were becoming all the rage, and everybody was thinking, yeah, everything is going to be microservices. So your entire application could be microservices. I was kind of a middle-of-the-road guy, and I still am today. You have your core monolith app based on some framework that you want to use, so I don't know, Express.js or PHP Laravel or Spring Boot, whatever. And uh, then you use microservices to support your core application. That's the model that I would use personally. Uh, code is still needed. Step four, companies will see... Companies see there is a need for professional developers and there is still requirements for code. Low code applications. Low code application is suitable for simple requirements, but companies 
while still have complex requirements and need custom applications. For larger solutions, it's easier to create with a complete with the complete solution in mind and easier to support one large solution. Mm, okay, let's go. Conclusion. Experts, experienced software developers, skill is more than writing code. It's their approach, experience, their ability to create simple code that is easily maintainable. That, I think, is the number one thing. What separates, and I say this over and over again, what separates pro developers from amateurs is that pro developers write simple, easy to understand code. Simple, easy. That's really one of the big things that separates the beginners from the, uh, the pros. Giving citizen developers, that's his term for uh, people who don't know how to not train in code, actually. Low-code tools doesn't mean they will create quality applications in the same standard as experienced developers. Um, there will always be a need and demand for complex applications that need to be built to work exactly to the, the specific requirements. Right here, professional developers will use low-code development tools to create applications and help in training citizen developers on how to become software developers without writing code. Low-code developer will hit the ceiling, make a big mess, and then with the help of developers, approach low-code development professionally lead to by, led by software developers. Okay, it's not the best writing, but whatever. We get the idea. So much of this, I agree. I have seen this play out over and over again, where you have people writing code to do something, and then some solution comes out where you don't have to write code anymore. And uh, people start freaking out. Oh, my God, it's the end of web development. It's the end of this. WordPress is an example of that. When WordPress and other content management systems came out and allowed you to create multiple, you know, you, you create a template, and then the WordPress engine creates all the subpages for you. A lot of web designers were freaking out that, oh, that's the end of it. That's the end of uh, web design. Everybody's just going to use a WordPress template. They were wrong. Uh, WordPress did, did, and other CMSs did provide a lot of functionality, but um, this was uh, allowed the whole developer landscape to raise the bar, if you will, in terms of what you would provide in a basic site, but it just shifted the work. So I think low code tools will once again shift the work over. These are nothing new. They've been, there has been low code technologies in the past. I'm sure they're more refined today but they just shift the work over. Much in the same way that uh, a framework, like a bootstrap or a, a Vue or React, instead of having to write all that boilerplate code uh, every time you approach a project, you use a framework and a lot of the work is done for you. Has that impacted the availability of jobs in the world? No, it's actually increased the number of developer jobs because with frameworks like Laravel or React or Vue or whatnot, uh, it allowed developers to be hyper-productive, allowed more companies to do uh, more complex things more easily, so it just opened up a lot of job opportunities. So I think low-code platforms will do just that for developers. They will be another tool in your tool set. You should be aware of them. I, I silo low-code technologies in, um, in my need-to-nerd category. I have my core category, the fundamentals, as I call them, which you must need to know how to write code, design patterns, uh, refactoring, best practices, uh, etc. And no code is part of that category that I would put in there where you learn it if you need to learn it. You should be aware of it, aware of the possibilities and the opportunities, and you implement them when need be. So I can see a combination where you might develop your core app with a traditional method uh, if it's a complex app. And then you, you leverage some no-code uh, technology to uh, uh, provide a little sugar uh, icing on the cake, if you will, a little extra. So there you go. That's the conclusion. I'm going to do a little Q&A now. Uh, if you liked this topic, please do give it a thumbs up. The, uh, the Googles like it. I should have asked, but I'm going to ask. I'm assuming that um, uh, you can hear me well. I'm assuming that you were. Hello, hello, hello. Hello from Earth. Hola, hola. Hello from Earth. Hey, Kevin, how are you, man? I hope everything is well. 
Aloha, Christine. Uh, can you suggest a resource for PHP? It is very popular in freelancing sites, so I am thinking of learning it. Yeah, take a look at the links below. I have a course in PHP that you'll learn a lot. Uh, check it out. Hey, hey, man, how are you, man? Did you get back from uh, Florida yet? Let me know. Uh, hey, hey, how are you doing? Hello from Spain. It's so hot here today, huh? Yeah, here too. We're going up to uh, 31 Fahrenheit, so super hot. I skipped my tennis game today. That's why I'm doing a live because it's just too hot. Hey, Michael, how are you? Uh, yeah, learn coding with Ruby. <laughs> Hello, sir. I'm in the 12th grade now. What is the best technology for me to study full stack or machine learning? Please answer me, sir. More opportunity in full stack. There's more jobs, more opportunity. But um, you can't go wrong with machine learning as well. Uh. <laughs> Are you going to talk about RPA with this as well? I feel like it dovetails into this. Um, no, no, uh, no, uh, I don't even know what RPA is on all honesty. What's RPA? Tell me what RPA is. Maybe I will. I right, Stefan, love you. All right. Well, love you guys too. Thanks for showing up. Uh, in 1982, at my first dev job, my boss told me, sorry, Dave, but in 10 years, we won't need programmers anymore. It will all be done with drag and drop apps. Yeah, pretty much. That's the way it goes. Well, you know, there was um, one of the most productive development uh, platforms, if you will, ever put out there was something, it was VB6 by Microsoft. And it was drag and drop. You just go, choo -choo 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 -choo. And, but you still had to write code. You had to stitch things together and you write code, but a lot of it was drag and drop. That uh, is now, I don't know, I'd probably still use it, but that was Windows specific. So it, it didn't work on the web. So that's why it died out eventually. Uh, local only exists as DMN in decision logic engines such as Kamunda. The few language has become my main priority lately, which I extend to a lot, a lot to fit the needs of business people. Uh, Michael says, do you think it's possible that monolithic companies such as Amazon could take over in the low code space? Surely it will be system systemized that maintenance won't be an issue by automation i think part of it will just like you know amazon and other cloud hosting providers are providing extremely sophisticated hosting solutions for example you don't have to engineer load balancing into your application you can just do that on the server uh, I, again, I just see complexity being shifted and the job, uh, and the work being shifted. So I don't see it as, um, competition. Is it okay if I invest my time learning Golang? Market is so, is so, so where I live, but what is your idea? What is Golang going good for? I haven't, I haven't used Golang. I know that uh, people who like Golang like it and they think it's better, but I think it's one of those need to nerd technologies. If you're every time you're just interested, dabble with it. But I would only jump into it when um, you see a job opportunity uh, or you, you have a job where you see Golang is really a superior candidate for it. You know, now I'm talking about this for some reason with Golang, you just reminded me, I think I'm going to get a five, five guys burger today, not sponsored. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I'm. Um, I, I think I got dehydration. I'm feeling a little dehydrated, a little bit of headache today, but um, that's why I didn't go play tennis with the heat wave. Uh, Michael continues. Couldn't it essentially wipe out the bottom eight percent of devs, where the top twenty percent refined system blocks of functionality that could be slotted together by amateurs in such a way that it's hard to break? Oh, I don't know, man. I think, um, like, uh, for example, for example, uh, WordPress developers, most of their time is not writing code. Most of their time is configuring, installing, and uh, 
having a good understanding of ecosystem so that they know what plugins are safe, which aren't, which themes to use, which not to use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, how to optimize WordPress so it works fast. You know, these are very, high, very highly valued skill sets, lots of jobs out there. You can make a ton of money doing that as a freelancer. It doesn't have anything, doesn't have anything necessarily to, directly to do with code. That being said, if you're doing all this type of work, you understand PHP and HTML and CSS, you understand the web stack, it will make your job much, much, much easier. Much, much, much easier. So I give that as an example to sort of answer your question. So I just think it's going to shift. Uh, uh, Google overlords need a thumbs up. That is true. Let me continue. So if you just dropped in, Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for letting me know. If you just dropped in, I covered the subject right away. I started within a minute, and I went, it's about 14 minutes uh, in terms of the no code. If you want to watch that, it's there for you. Hello, Alex. Hello. Greetings from Argentina. Bonjour, senor. Ah, Mr. Chad, thank you. Greetings from Brazil. Howdy, Steph. Hey, Rob, how are you, man? Slovakia. Hey, we got a lot of regulars here. They know, they know what to do. The usual... Uh, that's the official channel salute. The live uh, protocol was when you chime, you jump into the chat, you say hello from wherever you happen to be in the world. Everybody is fine. I find I find it cool, and I think a lot of people find it cool to know where everybody's watching from. Hello, Steph. Good to see you, my friend. Hey, thanks for joining. Good, well, good to see your icon at least. <laughs> uh, hey, Steph. What is your opinion on .NET Core five plus Vue three? Is it a good stack? I'm sure it's a good stack. My general opinion about stacks, except for Ruby on Rails, just joking about Ruby, um, I feel that all the stacks today are pretty good. I think that whether you're using .NET or using PHP Laravel or Python Django or uh, ExpressJS on Node, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, Java Boot, um, you can produce great apps for all these things. There's examples of extraordinarily successful applications built with all these technologies. So the one that you choose really depends on the nature of the job. Node, Express are better in certain circumstances, PHP Laravel and other circumstances, so on and so forth. So yeah, .NET Core with Vue, why not? I like Vue a lot, by the way. Okay, uh, what is the best technology? I told you, yeah, you should learn the web stack. Hey, Bailey, how are you, man? Uh, hi, I'm a C-sharp developer with a few years of experience. I've seen a lot of Python, Node.js, and recently got opportunities. Do you think C-sharp will remain a good niche, or would it be good to make a switch? I think as you get more experienced, a um, few years, okay. As you continue to develop, you'll be switching from language to language. Like for you to learn Python, you'll learn in a few days. You know, it won't be difficult for you. So just jump around based on the jobs and based on what you want to do. Understand that working in C Sharp, it suggests a different type of company. So C Sharp Java typically means very big companies, well established. Typically, typically, there I'm sure there's exceptions. So understand what working there means. So it has much more to do with local opportunity and the type of work you want to do and the type of company you want to work for more than anything else. Armand, what do you think about Oracle Apex local platform for building business general web applications? I haven't used it, Armand, but uh, Oracle does good work. So I mean, worth exploring. Yo, yo, what and what could be a good approach to that switch? Well, you start as a junior dev for those other languages. It depends on the company. Like I've, I have hired people who, uh, for example, I've hired somebody who was pretty experienced with with um, JavaScript and the JavaScript stack, and I brought him in because they had very good experience there into PHP world. And uh, within a short period of time, they were pretty much in a senior position. So skill is skill, right? And whether you're senior Java programmer, senior PHP programmer, senior Python programmer, those, uh, that experience transfers 100% over into another platform. So I wouldn't be too concerned. Like if you're like a master guitar, 
whether you play a Gibson or Stratocaster, there's still a master guitar uh, guitarist, right? Is .NET Core 100% cross-platform? Cross Maybe somebody can answer that. I don't know. Have you ever used middleware? No, I have not. The coffee wants you back. Yeah, that could be it. I'm having. I'm also off coffee, and uh, for about five, six, oh, maybe seven days now. And, I'm, and maybe that's why I'm getting headaches. I haven't had coffee in days. Stefan, uh, I just got a Java app dev analyst position. Hey, congratulations in a big company. Where else would that be? <laughs> My background is just data science with MATLAB language. Never did jobs deving MVCs. Will I be able to suggest on what to study? I would get into, um, I would understand MVC frameworks, first of all. Find out which Java framework they're using. Probably going to be Spring Boot. Who knows? Might be Strut. Who knows? But, um, and I would understand, and also learn Java. Learn the basics of Java. Uh, learn, and then learn MVC, Model View Controller. That's how Java is typically written on the server. And figure and find out what uh, app server they're using, whether they're using Tomcat or, uh, I don't know, WebLogic or something. So, yeah, that's what I would do. Isn't low code an opportunity for devs? 100%, Matthias. That's, it's, that's the point I was trying to drive. It's a tool set that you can leverage in your work to be more productive, just like you leverage a new IDE that's very productive, or you leverage uh, a plugin from a uh, company that provides an AI-based uh, code completion software. That's all. The Geek Viking, hey. Steph, I don't want to copy a tutorial for a project, but I still end watching 10-minute tutorials for a nice responsive header, another tutorial for a responsive footer, etc. Am I in tutorial hell? You're only in tutorial hell if you're not working toward building your demo site and then getting a job. Do the two to three freelance jobs. In my mentoring program, if you're interested, links below. In my mentoring program, once people get past their fundamentals, where they understand the languages, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, Python, PHP, SQL, and databases, and a bunch of other stuff. Once they get past all that, I get them to build a demo site. There, it's kind of like your calling card, your business card. And then you go out and you do two to three free projects with clients. And, and then you got the training there with the freelancing and the freelance and the project management. Why do you do that? Because there's no quicker way to get a job than to show a portfolio where you actually work with real clients, even small clients. I hope that answers the question. Hello, Stefan from Turkey here. What are your thoughts on blockchain technologies? I think they're very niche, neat to nerds. I'd silo them there. Remember, no low code is the new thing now. Oh my God, low code. Oh, it's going to take over the world. Uh, a few years ago, it was blockchain. Oh my God, blockchain. And then what was the other one? A few other ones like, uh, no, no, that's going to take over everything. No, it's big, but it's not taking over everything. It's not displacing all these other tech. So you're going to find low codes kind of in the same boat. Uh, blockchain, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good, but it's very, very niche technology. Uh, Steph, great to have you back. Without, sh without your streams, I got lost and ended up learning Scratch. <laughs> Scratch, by the way, is, um, they call it a, a programming language, but it's just block-based coding they use to teach kids how to code. I got lost. Uh, why can't I make great video games yet? Um, I think the key to making great video games is having a great idea. It's like writing a great song or uh, ra writing a great uh, book, you know? It's much more about that. The coding and all that kind of stuff, that's just implementation details. Hello, from Romania. Very cool. How's, how's it from Cape Town? Very cool. Belgium. Belgium. Tennessee. Wow. Which do you think is better route for freelance? Shopify development or WordPress? Many thanks. I would imagine there's more opportunity in WordPress. WordPress is like so much bigger than Shopify. Uh, but both are fine. You know, just try a little bit of each and see what you like and where the opportunity lies. Hi, buddy. You are awesome. I switched between two jobs and triplicate my salary of four videos like yours. 
uh, for four videos like yours. I'm not sure. Okay, so congratulations that you switched and you tripled his, uh, you tripled your salary. That's, yeah, for you guys who are interested in uh, careers, typically in not just software, any career, if you're in the corporate system, typically you, people will rise faster by switching different companies. So you go work at company A and you start off as a junior and you do a couple of years there, whatever, and then you got some skills, but because company A already has their senior developers in place, there's no way for you to go. But you put out your resume, bing, bing, boom, Bob's your uncle. Next thing you know, you're in another company and they put you in a senior dev or intermediate dev, a higher position, what a higher pay, because you're coming to them with skills and experience. And if you got good negotiating skills, because you did Lizard Wizard, then you'll be able to get even a higher salary. And then a year or two pass, three years pass, whatever, then uh, another opportunity. Now you're much better. Now you've done senior role. You're much better. Now you're you can be a lead developer. Then you can hop over to the next company. Again, same type of deal. Use your lizard wizard psych skills. You negotiate a higher salary. And next thing, next thing you've done is you triplicated your salary. Ah, greetings from the Netherlands. Hello from North Carolina. Very cool. Hey, man, Sergeant Camacho. Hello, next door, Toronto. <laughs> Very cool. Are you getting the uh, sweltering heat out there in Toronto? Toronto is the biggest city in Canada. Uh, this is I'm in Montreal, the second biggest city. Toronto tends to have more stable weather because they have the Great Lakes that sit in there. Jersey. Uh, hit, 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 hit the hitchhiker button, folks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I appreciate that. Give me the thumbs up so the Google algorithms, their AI knows that Steph's uh, Uncle Steph's streams are appreciated. Stacking up nightly. Steph, I don't want to copy a tutorial for a project, but I still end watching. Okay, we saw this. Okay. Uh, how's, it, how's it, Matthew? I'm from Zambia. Awesome, dude. Good, good. Hey, Steph, do you have a website hosting service you can recommend? You know, I think that for most website, any standard hosting service is pretty good. I've, I've had a couple of sponsors on here. They're pretty good. And uh, I think the key thing I always say to people is, assuming it's basic hosting, you don't need any f fancy requirements, and most of us don't, I would uh, call up their tech support. See if they answer. That's the key, tech support. Today, what separates the, the hosting, the good from the bad, is uptime and tech support, uptime and tech support. So check that out. React Native or Flutter? Ah, it depends on the project, depends on the project. Uh, perhaps people can comment on that. Uh, here we go. Let's see what we got here. Finish your HTML, CSS fundamentals courses. Hey, congratulations, good stuff. Did you do the certifications yet? Uh, I'm going to hold off on JavaScript now until I wrap my head a little more on CSS. I've learned, oh, I've learned how to search for solutions. Hey, that's a big part of being a professional developer, your ability to find solutions on your own. Yeah, CSS is a tricky. Actually, CSS, especially layout, is trickier than uh, I find JavaScript personally. That's me. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Matthew. Yeah, we have the globe here. Yeah, we have an international audience. It's fantastic. What does DDD, uh, who doesn't love triple Ds, architecture brings a value to microservices request response to shift to pub sub event driven platform? Uh, let me see if I can read this. Uh, brings a value to request response to shift to pub sub. Uh, event driven plan. What is the? I, I'm not sure. Uh, I had an answer for that yes year. I'd have to think about that. What is actually low code? You mean assembly? <laughs> no, they're talking about basically uh, the new version of VB6. <laughs> That's it. Advice young JavaScript backend developer. Uh, uh, yeah, write code, man. Build things. Uh, very good. Matthew is an expert with Google Translate. 
Uh, I don't think it will be end. Uh, let me try this case. I don't think it will be end the end of developers. Low code development have been around already for some time. Yeah, platforms like Microsoft Dynamics could be considered low code development. Uh, off coffee, I go to T. I go to T. Route. Laugh out loud. Mm. So see, I think people need to realize that low code and no code are actually code. They are just programs and they can develop their own low, no low code tools and code will always be there here to dev new tools. All right, I would do 35. All right, so I'm gonna be finishing this off. I think I had a super chat, I should get to that. There we go, super chat. Thanks, Dan. I would say coffee on Dan, but now I'm drinking coconut water. Coconut water on Dan. I don't think low code IDs will be the end of developers. These IDs are very limited. And in the real world, you will usually need a lot more complexity. That's probably the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> if this is the end of development, and finally I will get fired and get a job as a laborer. <laughs> uh, hey, you got a job. Fantastic. I got my first corporate development job. Fantastic. Yeah, I remember you were having some difficulty. Congratulations, dude. You just got to keep refining, getting a job and interviewing and finding jobs to interview for, preparing your resume, that's part of your skills. And you have to uh, understand that most people are going to have to make many attempts and try different things before they actually achieve success there. Uh, why did you quit coffee? I quit coffee because I was getting acid reflux. It's something in my family. And um, so coffee is not good for acid reflux, number one. Number two, um, I didn't realize, like, I could drink, I would drink like four cups a day. I could drink coffee at midnight and then go to sleep. It would never affect me. So I assumed that coffee didn't have much of an impact on me. But now, since I've been off coffee, I, I, I have no cravings for coffee. I don't see coffee and go, oh my God, I'm going to have coffee. Uh, I just go, whatever, I don't know, I'll drink something else. But I'm having these headaches. And it could be coffee or it could be um, dehydration. Because I went play, I played tennis one day and it was pretty hot and I didn't have a hat. And I wasn't drinking enough. So it could be that. I don't know. I tried to cold once. It was absolute catastrophe. catastrophe. <laughs> well, that's because you didn't do my courses. Do my courses, you'll learn. Uh, love your channel. Such good content. I appreciate that. Thanks. And I thanks everyone for the thumbs up. Uh, whoa, we got 181 viewers, only 86 thumbs. That's pathetic. My thumbs to viewer ratio is pathetic. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Bangkok. Yeah, good city. I've been there. Spent a couple weeks in Bangkok. Love this city. Great street food. The uh, pad thai on the, on the street is fantastic. Good afternoon, Steph. What do you think a blazer will end up in garbage the same way like Silverlight? Ah, uh, yeah, I would have to look at, I forget what Blazor is. I remember Silverlight. Could be. Um, most technology ends up in the uh, the nerd garbage heap. So that's why I don't jump around uh, jumping on the next fad necessarily so quickly. It seems that most companies don't like remote junior developers. Learning my local tech stack, IBM, would take my learning in a completely different direction. <laughs> uh, do you recommend getting a CS degree only if it's free or you can pay for it and not get student loans? Also, consider the job opportunities. A CS degree will help open some doors, but a strong portfolio, which you can develop within a year or so, is going to be much more powerful. It's 90 degrees in high humidity. Yeah, we're having a similar situation. Asta. Hello, Uncle Steph. Been watching your videos, shorts, recorded lives as well. This is the first live I'm watching. Cheers. Hey. Well, thanks for joining the live. Appreciate it. All right. I'll answer a few more. We're at almost 40 minutes. Hey, Steph. Thoughts on shifting from web dev to game dev? Look at job opportunities. Uh, I know that game... The game, it could be a higher pressure. Uh, it's more of a uh, specialized 
uh, type of job and skill set because how many game companies are there versus how many web design jobs? Like it's 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 not even close. And I know that the game companies can be brutal. So if you work on a company, you could work at a company for two three years on a game, and if it doesn't have super success, they could fire the whole division. Pew! I've seen that happen. So you got to be uh, wary of that. But you could try it out. Listen, you shift into game dev, try it for a few years, see if you like it. Make a lot of money for sure. Uh, the AI Steward Archive says, every few years someone comes up with the new tool to get rid of programmers. I've seen it again and again, and it never works out. Yeah, pretty much. I agree. That's what I've seen since 94. It's uh, So I wouldn't be too concerned. I think of it as flipping the dependencies. Instead of calling the dependencies, the dependencies are calling you. Okay, this must be a conversation that I'm not... Uh, privy to here uh what do you think about copilot of github i talked about that um supportive tool ai ai based um code completion is just good i wanted to learn to code but not really interested in front end back end interested not really interested in front end back end interests me more that's cool but you have to learn at least the basics of the front end html and css and javascript so you can do back end properly because at the end of the day a lot of times at the back end you're you're you know you're processing information hitting databases and uh, whatever generating images and whatever but you got to take all that that stuff that you're generating in the back end and you got to spit it up to the front end Pew! you got to package it all up send it back up to the front end to to display to the user so you have to know at least some front end all right, I'll answer one, uh, two, three more questions. I got to go. I think I got another uh, super chat here. All right, super chat without a question. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, oh, another one here. There we go. I'm 34 year old uh, nurse. Oh, very cool. I want to get into health informatics. I really interested in coding statistics, statistics, data, etc. Word of advice, please. Yeah, I would. Uh, that's great because you got a medical background will make you valuable. Python, Python's used a lot there, so look at Python. Yeah, yeah. I got a Python course. You want to check it out? Uh, uh, I see. It said I didn't read his comments. Let me see. I'm going to find George's comments. George, what do you think about low code for MVPs and prototype? Yeah, that would be my first instinct. I have to look at the local platforms. I don't know what they can do, uh, the new ones. I don't know what their limitations are. But yeah, definitely MVP. Like back in the day, back in the 90s even, they would have not quite low code, but they would have semi or somewhat, or they, they're hoping, they were saying it's going to be totally drag and drop, but they had drag and drop ish solutions. Uh, I think one was called Drum Beat, I believe. Anyhow. And uh, it's something you could prototype simple stuff with. The problem with these low-code or no-code platforms, if you're working within their parameters, they work well. But as soon as you got to do something a little custom outside their parameters, the whole thing starts to fall apart traditionally. So I don't know what it is today, how good they are today. I'm sure they're a bit better, but that's typically the case. Now, the problem is when you use these low-code tools, to, to stitch, let's say you stitch, stitch together an MVP. MVP is uh, short for minimum viable product. Basically a very a first iteration of a piece of software. My advice to you guys, if you're putting, I've done this several times, when you're putting out your first piece of software for a new business and you're not sure what the use case is, you want to put it out as quickly as possible. So I can see low code as being uh, an option here. So you put it all together with a low code solution. It's kind of working. But then you got to do this, and you got to do this, and then you find out the use, the use case requires this, and the client requires that, and so on. And all of a sudden, if the low code uh, does not have the capability to address that, then digging into that code that the low code uh, is providing um, could be a nightmare, could be a disaster, because usually these things are pretty complex. Unless the low code can be extended via microservices, um, model then that might work there or if you have low code capability to consume specialized implementations via a microservice interface that'd be kind of cool 
Anyway, all right, any other super chats? Uh, I think not. I got one more here. Uh, all right. You look so pale and sick. Go outside. Well, that's partly, I'm actually quite dark. It's actually my camera, my camera settings right now. Uh, but uh, I appreciate the word of, uh, of, courage, of encouragement there. All right, guys. Thanks for joining the stream. We've done my 45 minutes. Uh, if you want to see the, the main topic I cover in the first 10 minutes or so, you can get right into it. And uh, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.